Okay, so the goal here is to make a model for something orbiting in the Earth. So it's going to be great. Okay, we're going to we're using the same idea. We started off with uh, a ball that was falling. We use momentum principle. I use a mass on a spring. Use the momentum principle. Now I'm going to use the gravitational force. So this is the Earth. I drew this up here so I could focus. Uh, and so it has a radius. We'll call it R E. It has a mass M E. And I have some space satellite over here. It could be anything, but this one has little solar panels. And it has some momentum P, let's just call it P1. So in this situation, we have this satellite moving. What changes the momentum? The force. A force changes it. So I would know that F net equals delta P over delta T. Okay, so that's the momentum principle. So in this case, what force is acting on the satellite is the gravitational force. So if I have any two objects with mass, then there's a gravitational force between them. So let's make this as complicated as possible. I actually put it up here. Here's my origin. So here I have this vector, R s for the satellite, and then I have this vector, R, well, let's call it little, little r, r earth. I need to find the gravitational force that depends on this vector, the vector from the center of the earth to the satellite, and that's r. And if I do that, then the gravitational force on the satellite is going to be f g is negative g mass of the earth mass of the satellite over the distance between them squared, the magnitude of r squared, then I have to multiply by r hat. Because I need to use this as a vector. If I don't, I can't do the momentum principle as a vector. right? So this is what I'm going to do. I can find g, that's just a gravitational constant. g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meters squared, or kilogram squared, squared meters. And the mass of the Earth, I'm going to look that up, but I don't really care. I care, but I don't really care. The radius of the Earth uh, doesn't really matter because I only need the distance between them. Okay. So uh, I can calculate that as a gravitational force. The negative sign is because it's an attractive force. So if I have the vector from the Earth to the satellite, then there is a, uh, the gravitational force is this way, which is r hat would be that way. Okay. So that's pretty cool. We can calculate the gravitational force. Now, what's that force going to do? Well, if this force is pulling it this way and the momentum is moving that way, then after some short time interval, I have, here's P1. That's going to be delta P, right? Because that's the direction of the change in momentum because that's the direction of the force. So now my new momentum is going to be like this, P2. So this is going to move forward and turn, so it'll be over here. But now I have a problem. Now it's in a new position. So now the gravitational force is different. The magnitude is different because this r could be different. But definitely the direction is different because now it's this way. So it's a complicated situation. I can't just say use the momentum principle. I could do this over some short time interval like, I don't know, depending on the distance, um, you know, an hour. If I do an, a time interval of an hour, it probably, the, uh, the gravitational force didn't change that much. But this is what I'm going to do to calculate the gravitational force. So here is our plan. Number one, find Rs and R Earth. Hopefully that won't change. Two, calculate R. R magnitude and R hat. I need all those. Three. Calc F gravity. Next, update momentum. So this is going to be P2 equals P1 plus F delta T, and then update position. R2, I should write more clearly. R2 equals R1 plus P2 over M delta T. 
Okay, and that's that cheating part, right? Because I'm using the momentum after I calculated here for the average velocity, which is wrong, but not too terribly wrong. And then I can keep doing this and model the motion of this uh, satellite around the Earth. Now, there is one piece, right? Because if the Earth pulls on the satellite, then the satellite also pulls on the Earth. And uh, it would have with the same magnitude. So it would be the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction, like that. But the mass of the Earth is so large that its change momentum is essentially going to be, the, well, the change of momentum is going to be the same, but the change of velocity with that large mass is going to be essentially zero. So it doesn't really move. We can take this situation, though, and easily make it so that the, both objects are gravitationally interacting. So that's what I'm going to do. Number one, make a satellite orbiting the Earth. Number two, make something like the moon orbiting the Earth so that both objects move. It's going to be great. Okay. So I'm going to switch and do this on the computer for you.